Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another edition, and a super special edition, of Against the Odds. So last week, we didn't have an Against the Odds poll, because this is week one of Hour of Devastation, so we're kicking things off with a super special episode featuring one of my favorite cards from the set, and also the MTG Goldfish spoiler card from the set, and that is Celeste. Solemnity. So we're heading to Modern to jam as many Solemnity combos as possible, and I think this deck is actually super sweet and pretty powerful. I'm really excited for this one. So anyway, if you miss voting on the Against Odds poll, make sure to follow the link in the description. It'll take you to an article on the site, and down at the bottom, you'll find a poll with a bunch of Hour of Devastation options, so you can help choose which card we'll play next week. Anyway, let's break down Esper Solemnity, and of course, the namesake enchantment of the set of the deck solemnity three mana players can't get counters and counters can't go on artifacts creatures enchantments or land so while this looks like a hate card and it is a hate card there's actually a lot of sweet offensive things you can do with this deck to actually use it as a combo piece to disrupt the opponent so we actually have a few different plans built around solemnity so first off we have the solemnity lock with phyrexian unlife if we can get a solemnity and a phyrexian unlife on the battlefield at the same time time we're basically invincible until our opponent kills one of our enchantments so Frexian on life makes it so we don't lose the game for going below zero life but if we're below zero life all damage is dealt to us as if the source had infect so poison counters but with a solemnity out we can't get poison counters or any other kind of counters so no matter how much damage we take we're not gonna die so this is one of our plans and i actually considered and tried a hardcore lock deck with ghostly prisons and sphere of safety and just try to like lock the opponent out of the game but there's a lot of other sweet things to go with Slimney as well. So instead of just being focused on the lock plan, this is just one of the things that our deck can do. We can just randomly end up with the combo. Some decks really can't beat it. Other decks can beat it. But this is just one of our lines of attack. The other thing we can do is use some sweet three drops to kind of go infinite. So Dross Messenger and Kitchen Finks are similar. They have different mechanics, Undying and Persist, but they work in the same way with undying the creature comes back into play after it dies with a plus one plus one counter if it didn't have a plus one plus one counter and persist is the opposite comes back into play with a negative one negative one counter if it didn't have a negative one negative one counter so the idea here is we get a slim nitty out and if our messenger or our finks dies they just come back to the battlefield because they won't have any counters on them so we can block with them they keep coming back and etc etc so that's part of the plan the big deal here though is Dralf's messenger drains our opponent for two when it enters the battlefield so not only are we getting this recursive creature that doesn't go away it's also damaging our opponent and then kitchen finks gains us life so instead of just using these for value we actually can just go infinite for example we have draw messenger we have solemnity if we have a sack outlet like viserys here or cartel aristocrat we just kill our opponent on the spot sack draws messenger comes back drains our opponent sack it again drain our opponent sack it again drain our opponent never gets the counter because we have solemnity out to keep that from happening so the thing i love about this deck so much is we have a legitimate turn four win nut draw and it's not even that far-fetched we just play either of our sacrifice outlets viserys here or cartel aristocrat on turn one or turn two on turn three we play a solemnity on turn four we play dross messenger kill our opponent we also have some other ways of finding and kind of supporting solemnity just one ofs but we have one zero the enchanter which not only can tutor up our solemnity itself but also tutors up our phyrexian unlife so we just attack with zer we get our combo pieces for free lock our opponent out of the game it can also just find like the solemnity to set up the combo we were talking about with Dralf's messenger so a lot of value with zer plus it's just a big one for in the air so lots of value there and then glendolendra archmage also just a one of because it's a little 
expensive at four mana, but it basically gives us infinite one mana negates. It has persist like Kitchen Finks, sack it for a blue mana to counter a non-creature spell, keeps coming back into play thanks to persist, doesn't have a counter thanks to solemnity, so we can kind of just hard lock non-creature spells out of the game, which is awesome with the solemnity lock. So we have the lock set up, our opponent's going to want to cast enchantment removal to deal with it, maelstrom pulse to deal with it. We can just use Glenelinda Archmage to repeatedly counter anything that would disrupt the Solemnity Lock. So, an interesting piece with Solemnity, but like I said, both Xur and Glenelendra are one ofs just because they're kind of on the high end of our curve. As far as the rest of the deck, we have some support cards. Thoughtseize Inquisition gives us some turn one plays, get answers out of our opponent's hand. Of course, our infinite damage, infinite life combos are disrupted by creature removal, so we can get rid of a Path to Exile, a Fatal Push, something like that that would ruin our ability to go infinite with damage and life gain, or get rid of Abrupt Decays, other things that could kill our Solemnity. Fatal Push, Path to Exile, deal with our opponent's creatures. As I mentioned, we're not a hardcore lock deck. We're not the Ghostly Prison in Sphere of Safety just try to lock you out of the game. While there will be times when we have both lock pieces and we do lock our opponent out of the game, we also need removal to make sure we stay alive to assemble all of our stuff, because we're not super focused on setting up the hard lock. In the mana base, some fetch lands, some sock lands to fetch up, shambling vents, creeping tarpet, urborg for value, a couple of swamps, island in plains. As you probably noticed, all the lands are weighted towards swamps, except for our one basic island and one basic plains, which are basically to make sure we don't get blood mooned out of the game. Everything produces black mana, and even the island in the plains can because of Urborg, because we really want to be able to cast Dross Messenger on turn three. Dross Messenger is super powerful, but the mana cost is a real cost when it comes to building decks. In the sideboard, we get a lot of good stuff, because black and white have great options. Fulminator Mages for Trump. Sony Silence for Affinity, also for Tron. Relic for Graveyard Decks. Surgical for Graveyard Decks. Also works well with Fulminator against Tron to do the sweet little combo of destroying the Tron land and exiling all the Tron lands. Rule of Law for Storm Decks or other decks looking to cast a lot of spells in the same turn. Negates, just kind of a catch-all counter spell. Supreme Verdict, we actually have some neat synergies with Rass. If we have our Kitchen Fangs and Drolf Messengers out with the Solemnity, we're going to get those things back once they die so we can kind of wrath and still have our creatures coming back and then just one pithy needle for general value so that's esper solemnity for modern and that's our against the odds deck for this week so i'm super excited to try this deck out i think it's gonna be super sweet like i said i started with the hardcore prison build and while i think that build can work i think this build is much more fun i love the fact that not only can we randomly lock people and even tutor up our lock with Zer and protect our lock with Glenelander Archmage, so I love that part of it, but I also love the aristocrat style, random we just win the game on turn four when we happen to play the right cards in the right order. And apart from Solemnity itself, we have a lot of redundancy. We have eight sack outlets. We have eight go infinite creatures in Finx and Dralf's Messenger. Uh, and Infinite Life and Infinite Drain, obviously just killing the opponents better. But Infinite Life can essentially win us a lot of matchups as well. Most decks, if we go up to a thousand life, just don't have the tools to beat us unless they're playing Mill or something like that. So either one gets the job done. So, I mean, really, we want to draw our Solemnities. That's what we're hoping for. We do have the Xurs to find them, but I think if we draw our Solemnities, there's no reason this deck can't be pretty good. We get good discard, we get good removal, we have a good and efficient combo, we have creatures that are good on their own, we have pretty much everything you could want to have a good successful deck. So, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be fun. Hopefully we get some sweet locks and some sweet turn four combo kills. Anyway, that's Esper Solemnity. That's our Against the Odds deck for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you haven't already, take a minute and click that subscribe button. It's a great way to support the channel for free, and you'll find the next video in the playlist right here.